Hello everyone and welcome back to Learn Arabic. Have you ever heard that the fun part of learning any language is to study its grammar rules? Well, it is. And as of today, the fun will begin. From now to on, we will start our quest to learn as many grammar rules as possible in order to help you not only understand Arabic, but also properly and fluently speak the language. Don't be scared though, I will explain everything in small and easy steps and what will give you the strength to pursue this path is to always keep in mind that understanding grammar is one of the most effective ways to speed up your ability to speak the language at the highest level of proficiency. Right. Since today's lesson is the first step out of our baby steps towards understanding Arabic grammar, we will begin with a skim through the parts of speech, which will in turn explain how a word is used in any given sentence. So, without any further ado, let's delve in, shall we? Now, before providing you with an exhaustive list of the parts of speech, let's take a look at the title itself. The parts of speech are called in Arabic Aqsam ul Kalam. Aqsam stands for parts of, and Al Kalam stands for speech. So again, we do say Aqsam ul Kalam. And the easiest way to define speech in Arabic would be al-lafdul mufid, which simply means useful expression. And the reason why we care about these parts of speech is that they explain how a word is used in any given sentence. As a result of which, these parts are also known as word classes, and we are about delving into them. When it comes to the Arabic language, there are only three word classes, and when I say only, I'm obviously referring to the English language which has eight classes. I know that this might be a little perplexing from an English speaker perspective, and what might comfort you a little bit is to tell you ahead of time that we are not omitting any class. We are just sort of hiding them or let's say rearranging them into subclasses, as I will reveal as we get deeper on our study. Right, back to our topic. So, as I said, the Arabic language has three parts of speech, also known as word classes. Therefore, any given word in the Arabic language will fall under one of these parts of speech. And these categories are called from right to left ismun, fi'lun, harfun. Ismun, fi'lun, harfun. So again, if I try to rephrase what I have just said, I would simply say that any Arabic word is either a noun, ismun, a verb, fi'lun, or a particle, harfun. So far, so good. Now, how do we call word in Arabic? We do call it kalima. Again, kalima. And by kalima, we mean a single distinct element of speech. I'm not going to get into the endless debate whether it should convey a meaning on its own or not, because we are going to break it down anyway when we will explain each class separately. Now, as a first step, we are going to take you through an overview of each word class and then focus on nouns on the upcoming lesson. As we progress, you will realize that we are following the path leading us to the first type of Arabic sentences which is nothing but the nominal sentence. I have just gave you a spoiler to help you see the big picture. Right, back to the matter at hand, 
At this stage, we all agree that the word is called kalima in Arabic and that words are divided into three categories which are mutually exclusive and cover all words in the Arabic language. And these categories are ismun, which stands for noun, fi'lun, which stands for verb, and harfun, which stands for particle. It is also worth mentioning that when we say divided, it is by no mean an equal division, because as a matter of fact, nouns represent the largest part of the Arabic words, and particles have the lowest percentage out of the three. Moving on, so our first category is called ismun, and it includes what we know in English as nouns, pronouns, adjectives, and adverbs. The second category is that of verbs, and just like in English, a verb is a verb. It shows an action or a state of being, and it conveys a meaning on its own, and it also has a tense. As opposed to the last category that doesn't convey meaning on its own and doesn't have a tense. Of course, we are talking about al-harf. This third category of particles includes what we know in English as prepositions, articles, conjunctions, and particles. Please note that the word particle is a catch-all term that includes things like interjections and other words that are not well categorized. That's on one hand. On the other hand, I also want to set the record straight when it comes to the term harf. Harf literally means a letter, like A or B. And even though we are using the term harf, this doesn't mean that we are only talking about particles written in one letter, such as li o b. The meaning here is more inclusive, and it includes every single particle, regardless of its spelling. As you can see, these particles have more than a single letter, or let's say, more than a single harf. So, by and large, harf refers to all the particles in the Arabic language, whether these are written in one letter or more. Just remember that, it will come in handy later on when we get to it. So, that was an overview of the three parts of speech in the Arabic language, also known as Aqsamul Kalam. And at this stage, it stands to reason that all of you are wondering how to identify these parts of speech and is it possible even for complete beginners. Or, to put it differently, how do we differentiate between Ismun, Fi'lun, and harfun. Well, I've always thought that the Arabic grammar is mesmerizing, but it won't seem that way if you find yourself lost in it with no reference point. What I'm trying to say is that in order to make our journey enjoyable with a strong sense of orientation, we all need a landmark or a touchstone, whatever you want to call it, in order for us to be able to find our way and don't get lost. Thankfully, someone did the hard job for us, and our reference point will be the signs that grammarian scholars came up with a long time ago to help us identify each part of speech easily. And what is even more fascinating is that these signs will work on your behalf even if you are still learning the language and don't even know the meaning of all the words you are reading or hearing. Sounds promising, isn't it? So again, الاسم والفعل والحرف have unique qualities that will help us tell them apart. And as of our next lesson, 
we are going to cover all of these qualities, not at the same time, but in a certain chronological order, and our first stop will be the nouns. That's it for today. Thank you for your attention. Shukran ala husni istima'ikum. I would really appreciate if you take enough time to let these points soak in, then starting from the next lesson about nouns, we will build on these as we continue our study. Best of luck and remember to have fun learning Arabic. Ma'a salama.